This video is made possible by Simply Safe. There is no safe like Simply Safe. The geeky side of me has dreamed of being here for a very long time. I am at Haltech Australia, the center of it all, and we're going to show you how we turn this into this. It's the very first prototype PCB. Oh, so no, up here, up there. Oh, oh. Yeah. That's the first halt. Yeah, that's the first one. Wow. You can see up on the top right corner of the PCB, it says HAL in solder. Yeah. Trace, yeah. I think this is no longer a, a secret. There she is. Yep, that's yep. the new S3, S2. Oh, that's so cool. Um, that we launched. Wednesday. Wednesday last week. Yeah, Wednesday it reached, last just week. Just recent. So am I correct in saying that the S3, S2 is, is kind of the next generation of the Elite? S3 is an Elite 2500 with a WBC. Nice. Uh, and S2 is an Elite 1500 with a WBC, but both with dual drive by wire. Well, this really shows you the, the size difference between the 10 and the 7. Their employee barbecue was here while we were here and so it's neat because a lot of the guys brought their own cars and it just shows you that one of the reasons that Haltech works so well, Haltech, excuse me, is because the people building them are car people. One of my personal favorite cars, I'm so jealous of this, the Miller Meteor, which was made for, you know, like hearses and, and ambulances and that was the basis of the Ecto-1. This is nuts because we're in Australia and this is an extremely American car. A little Oh, uh, marshmallow. Um, stay puff. <laughs> Little guy. I would drive the shit out of this thing. <laughs> well, I use Simply Safe to take care of everything here in the shop. Inanimate objects, no matter how financially expensive they may be, don't compare to how important your or my babies are. <laughs> so, those two cats. Stay at home and of course we have an auto feeder and all that sort of stuff but both Eric and I want to make sure that those little cats are safe and so Simply Safe uh, comes to the rescue there and this is probably one of my favorite things while we're in Australia we could check up on the cat so it gets their attention because they can see a flashlight but look at there's a little cat sitting in a box in the corner <laughs> of the room and so it, it's nice because you know especially for Erica that was her first time being out of the country so she was worried about you know people breaking in she was worried about if the cats are okay Simply Safe has a sensor for all of your worries. People breaking in, entry sensor, checking on the cats. You got a variety of cameras, indoor camera, outdoor camera, smart camera. And more importantly, we just got done with the absolute insane heat wave here in Southern California. And it was important to make sure that the AC at the house was working. So you've got temp sensors for that. Same thing here is the temp sensor can tell you how brutally hot it is inside of the shop. A fire would be an extreme heat situation, but they actually have a smoke detector as well, all part of the Simply Safe comprehensive system. Getting your own Simply Safe system has gotten even more beneficial. And the benefits are so long and listed that I actually have to read. I can't memorize all of the things of the savings that you get. So right now, you save 50% of your system when you sign up, plus a free indoor camera that's new. And then on top of that, your first month is free when you sign up for the core monitoring program. All of that, if you go to simplysafe.com slash Rob Dom, there is no safe like Simply Safe. Normally when you're building electronics, you know, you outsource all of those parts, but not here. These are the circuit boards. Depending on the design of the product, though, we have different layers. So I'm not sure on this particular product, it's either six or eight layers. So there is effectively circuit tracks six layers between. That's how they managed to cram all that in there. So that's an R3 ECU. So the product comprises of two circuit boards. There's the ECU side, which does all your injectors, ignition, or your logic. And then the other side of it, which is the PDM, which is, does all your all the power. All the power stuff. <laughs> this is the very first step of the whole process. So all their little boards are made, but there's no chips. I am not qualified to talk about these next couple steps. So the guys from Haltech are gonna help teach us what is going on over here. SMT, as we call it, is for surface mount technology. So the parts are surface mounted to the board. This is yeah. um, a screen, so solder screen. I think this is for a UC10 by the looks of it. So effectively what we do, we have a solder paste, mm. which consists of tiny microscopic solder balls down of like one micron in diameter, and it comes out as a paste. So we apply the paste just like any screen printer with a t-shirt. So that board has been pasted. That is a specific design criteria based off the component manufacturer. So had underneath needs to be a certain dimension and then the screen uh, needs to have a opening or a window to allow the right amount of solder paste. This circuit board is essentially just a bunch of wires all ran through here. So it's just a bunch of connections waiting 
for the electronics to be placed on it. Now, in the past, back when I was even in high school, you would have to solder by hand the little boards on all of the little fingers, all of the little dots, all soldered together. This whole process here takes that mind-blowingly to the next level. So we'll run through turning this board into a proper circuit board. Oh, that's cool. Grabbing off of these. What, what are these ribbons? Each one of those is a, a slot for a component. 10 nozzles on the front head. We've also got 10 nozzles on the back end. Each of the nozzles are quite small, so they use uh, vacuum. So the vacuum generators in the machine, it'll come through and actually effectively suction on. It'll pick up all 10 at once, go back to the circuit board and drop them where they need to be. Then the feeders will actually index the part forward, ready for the next pickup. Wow. Our R5 ECU has the highest component count. It's the highest density board we have. <laughs> Therefore, we need the two mounters to be able to put everything onto that part. Almost identical, we have a different head on the back of this machine just to pick up larger components and all the silicon chips that we place on the board. Comes through to what? It's known as a reflow oven. It'll transition the solder paste, put it through a temperature profile, get it up to that eutectic point. The solder will, will go into a liquid phase or molten phase and then we cool it down on the back side of the oven. So each board that comes off the line now will go through a digital inspection process. Misorientated components, lifted components, joints that don't have sufficient enough solder. You know, we can actually look at it Whoa. in 3D and go, okay, it's what it's probably picking up is the filleting on that joint. Uh, and there's also a little bit of solder pad uh, inside, but we deem that as acceptable. Man, um, true so, quality control okay, right there. So, Every board that comes off this line goes through this machine twice. We'll then take these magazines, we'll tip them upside down, and then we'll feed them back through the other side. The line will actually draw the boards back through, and then we'll go and place the second side of the PCB. R3 ECU, literally hot off the oven. We can pick up any patterns, so we start to see that on multiple boards. We know that, hang on a sec, for some reason there's been a component misplaced on that board. So instead of building a thousand, two thousand boards and then working out that we've put an incorrect part on it, we're picking that up as it's coming off the line. The boards come through, if they are determined that they are need inspection, the inspection machine will write on the board to say that it needs to be inspected. It'll give us an okay if it doesn't. We have a repair technician that will go through and do any minor touch-ups that need to be done. So the boards will then come in here and then we have boards that will go through what we call an open test. So this is to be tested, so spring-loaded pins. Yep. So they'll actually come and touch all the test points on the board. So we drop that in. We scan that serial number if we get to it. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, and then we run through our test screen. Done by the guys up in R&D. Uh, these testers, they're all bespoke as well. That'll program all the chipsets. It'll go through and test all the inputs, all the outputs. And there's the PDM site too, which will do all the high current testing as well. And then once that passes, the unit will actually come back here once it's assembled. We don't want to get to the point where we do a test at the end of the process and realize that there's a problem with That's this board. That's a good board. point. So we want to be able to capture it straight away before we put time, effort, material, and once they pass, we'll go through and we'll do the next soldering process. So what this is called is selective soldering. So the PD is actually, a, on the R5, is a separate, separate board. board. Itself, yeah. That's so cool. Even this process, from this step to the finished product, is all done right here. effectively hitting that unit as hard as we can. So testing all the input, like loading them right up, um, injector outputs, ignition outputs, yeah. the 25 amp outputs, just giving it hell and just making sure it goes through and passes. Those are tested on every unit, pushed to the limit here before it ever leaves the factory. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> there we are.